Hey guys, what's up? It's Daniel with TrailerMountain.com and today I'm testing a 4K action camera uh, that this company from Amazon, they're a big Amazon seller, they contacted me, they wanted me to review their camera. So this is the uh, Icontext 4K Ultra High Definition Action Camera. This thing has a lot of cool features built in uh, that even some of the other higher uh, priced action cameras do not have. So, number one, it shoots in 4K. Two, it has zoom. Um, zoom? Really? Yeah, it has zoom. That's pretty cool. Uh, it also has uh, night shooting. Uh, it's also obviously waterproof and it does have built-in Wi-Fi. And you could also do time lapse. Uh, and I think it also has voice command too, which is really cool. So I'm gonna get it out of the box I'm gonna show you what it comes with and then we'll do some shoots with it and I'll show you how good the quality is uh, Compared to like a GoPro Hero 3 black, which is my normal GoPro that I use <clears throat> All right, so it's a box within a box Get that open So, very similar to a GoPro, same kind of mount, same kind of little clip that goes into like a helmet mount or something like that. Um, let's, you know, let's set this off to the side. I'll show you what it comes with. It comes with a Sports 4K Ultra um, HD camera. This is your owner's manual. It comes in several different... Uh, Languages and also on the back. There's also a QR code and that's for either Android or uh, Apple So you can link this thing to your smartphone and then you can control it via the app as a remote so it Comes with all kinds of stuff it comes with a uh, little microfiber cleaning cloth right there That's cool uh, We have some Nylon straps, it looks like. Yep. Nylon little quick release straps, so this way you can strap this thing down to a helmet. There's two quick release straps that are adjustable. Close those down. And it has two Velcro strips as well. So that's kind of cool. Let's see what else it has. Whole package of little zip ties. Whoa! It has a metal tether, and we got 3M sticky tape. This is for mounting the uh, the mounts to your helmet or your bike or your car or whatever. Um, really good. They use 3M, which is the best stuff out there. So, so I got another box here. This is probably all the cables, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Jeez, this thing comes with all kinds of mounts. So you have your J mount. Get out of the bag here. So, J mount, little clip. You have a small mount here. You have another longer extendable mount, so these two can work together. This way there's multiple angle options you have. And these are the actual mounts themselves. So both sticky. And this little guy will clip right in there, just like that. Doesn't move at all, it stays nice and solid. And then you just push that, this little guy pops right out. So two flat mounts, these are both flat mounts. So it has all those mounts it comes with. And then there's the last box here, which is pretty big. This has a whole bunch of other stuff in it. Okay. I'm not going to get out of the bag, but handlebar seat post mount. Key. That's awesome. It comes with it. And it has a little rubber. Uh, I'll take it out of the bag. So on the inside here, it has a little rubber strip right here. So if you have like a carbon seat post or carbon handlebars, uh, you don't want to run the risk of scratching it has rubber built in so that's gonna really protect your the item that you actually screw this or clamp this down to so that's pretty cool bags galore 
like they have they have a separate little Ziploc bag for everything. Um, kind of wish they didn't do that, but um, we have this other mount here, which I'm not really sure. This is like a uh, naked frame mount, I believe. Another bag here. So this is a tripod mount. So you have a regular standard tripod mount now, or your action camera tripod mount. Either which way. Non-waterproof back door. So they give you a separate back door, which is cool. This is all included. This, All this stuff comes with the camera, which is great. They give you another little adapter right here. So that's another one that they give you. They give you all these mounts. You have a USB to micro USB charging cable. So there's your deal right there. It has this other mount right here, which is kind of very unique. You know, screw mount on the top and the bottom here. And it also has this other mount that has a spring-loaded clamp. This slides into here. Like that. So you can actually clamp this to whatever, and that's going to uh, uh, clamp down onto the actual camera itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this little mount off. Uh, I think it's on tight. can't believe all the mounts this thing has come with, you know, and the other cameras don't come with half of these. All right, so let's get this thing open. It opens just like a regular GoPro camera would. And we'll get this thing out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of turn my camera around just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And then I'll compare this to the Hero 4 Black. All right, so here's your camera right here. And it has a little mini HDMI port right here. Or right here, sorry. And then that's the charging port. And then you have access to your little micro SD card. It does not come with an SD card, but I'm just using a little 32 gig SD card right here. So you kind of just pop that in there with your finger now. It's kind of, these are so small. Uh, it does have a cool little uh, protective plastic on the back here. It does come with a built-in screen, so that's nice. On the side here, you have your Wi-Fi. You have buttons up and down. And then you have your, obviously, your camera lens and your power button. The bottom is your access to your battery. Let's see if I can pop this thing open. It's kind of difficult. Okay, so it's pretty difficult to get the little battery door off just because there's only so much room in here and you can't get your thumbs in there. But once you get the little cover off, pull out your little battery. It is a uh, rechargeable lithium ion battery. And yeah, here we go. It is a 1050 milliamp. So, pretty decent sized battery. It can only go in one way. So you pop it in there. Once you get your battery cover back in place, that just snaps in place. And then we're gonna hit the power button. Hit it once. There's a little blue indicator light right there. It says welcome and there's a little power, um, power on sound that happens. So, you hit the power button here and that cycles through all of your different menus here so it's saying that there's no files on the SD card and that's fine but then you get into your setup and you can go to resolution you hit the power or the, the OK button on the top here that's your enter so now you can set up however you want it you want it in ultra high definition you want it in VGA you want it in you know all these have different you know settings so I usually keep it in uh, full HD, 60 frames a second. And then we'll go into loop recording. Loop recording is actually pretty cool because you can set it up to three minutes, five minutes, or 10 minutes, and then you can, or you can turn it off. So what that means is you could actually hit, a re hit record and say you set it on three minutes. It'll record a three minute clip and then it'll stop recording and then start another three, uh, three minute clip or five or 10. Now keep in mind that once the memory card gets full, it'll automatically rewrite the first uh, file that's on the memory card and just start overwriting it. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see here. So we're gonna go to off on that. So you could also select gyroscope and gyroscope's kind of cool. 
So what that's going to do is it's actually going to keep it a lot more uh, stable on image. So set that on. WDR, you can turn that on or leave that off. And so we're going to leave that off. And then we're going to get back into the menu here. Time lapse record. You can do time lapse. You can do 100, 200, 500, one second, or every five seconds. So it doesn't matter which one you want to go to. Motion detection. Motion detection is pretty cool because when you have this selected on, so when you have this thing set up on motion detection and the camera's off, if something passes in front of it, it's going to automatically turn the camera on and start recording. So if you want to use this as like a security kind of camera, you could do that too. Record audio. So you can choose whether or not to record audio. I like to leave it on. Date stamp. I don't really like the date stamp, so I'll turn that off. Angle. So you can do 170 degree, 140, 110, or 70, depending on how you like it. If you want it really fisheye, leave it at the 170. You want it a little bit more mellow, keep it at the 140, which is what I'm going to set it up right now. Diving mode. So you can do diving mode on or off. You know, it's going to change the, uh, the, the, the way the camera shoots video underwater. So I'm not going underwater with it, so I'm going to leave that off. Night scene. So you can do night scene, which means that in low light settings, it will automatically adjust the camera for low light as well. So I'm gonna leave that off because it's not nighttime. You can do a self timer, image size. It starts at 20 megapixel, where it starts off at, uh, so it starts off at VGA 640 by 480, all the way to three, uh, three megapixel, five megapixel, eight, 10, 12, 16, and 20 megapixel images. So this thing has pretty substantial image size. You could do image burst, quality, you could do fine, normal, or economy. Economy is gonna give you the biggest um, storage for your memory card. Usually they like to leave it right in the middle for a normal. Sharpness, same thing, normal, leave it on there, but you could adjust all of this. White balance. Same, leave it on auto, or if it's cloudy or daylight, you know, fluorescent lighting, color, color, black and white, or sepia. So you could do three different color options there. You can actually shoot in black and white or sepia, which is really cool. ISO, you can do it on auto. You can adjust one, 200, or 400. Leave it on auto. Exposure value, you can select all of those different options. anti-shaking leave that on you can delete files you can protect files you know there's nothing on there and you can turn Wi-Fi on or off from here I'll get to that in a minute and there's your Wi-Fi SSID number Wi-Fi password date and time so you can select the date and time today is and then you go to auto power off so it'll automatically power off in one minute, three minutes, or five minutes. Leave that on three minutes. You could do beep sound. You could have that on or off. I'm gonna leave it on. Voice prompt, on or off. I'm gonna leave that on just for the sake of this video. Normally I would keep it off. On screen direction, you can do that. Leave that on. So language, English, French, Dutch, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Russian, Chinese, there's Polish on here too. TV mode, NTSC or PAL, depending on which TV. TV on or off. Screen saver, so you can set that. There's a lot of features to this little camera, so set that to one minute. Frequency, you can do 50 hertz or 60. Format, you can format the SD card from here. default setting and then you can go to software version it's going to tell you what ver version of software you have okay once you have it all set up the way you want it hit the menu button on the outside again and now you're in record mode okay so there's your video icon right there you have other icons it tells you how much time is left on the memory card and the frame rate you're shooting at 60 frames a second auto audio on there's your battery indicator, there's the time on the bottom and the date. 
and then you hit the front button again, the power button, and it goes into uh, photo. So you can actually shoot a photo with the OK button, which is right up here. Um, and then you hit it again, and you can go into the actual files. And then you hit it again, and you can go into menu. Hit it one more time, gets you back to video. And then, so now we're going to go and shoot some video on it and show you how well it works. Hit the power button and hold it for a second. So if you hit the power button and hold it for a second, it turns itself off. It says goodbye. That's pretty cool. So on the side here, there's another microphone right there, as well as here, or that's the speaker, I'm sorry. So on the side here, right here, that's the speaker. On the side here, that's the microphone right there, those three little dots. So. What you do is you get this thing in your case here, close that up. This is the waterproof case, and then now you're good to go. There's this little protective sticker on the front here. Let's take that off. So buttons on the outside to select the on-off button. You can do your rockers for your up-down arrows, and then your start record or image take button right here. And you can also see everything from the back panel here because that's all exposed waterproof case this it comes already installed with the waterproof back door on it the non waterproof back door is also in uh, included and it's in the box so I'm gonna leave this on just to kind of protect the plastic but that's the basic idea now turning this camera on we're gonna sync the Wi-Fi so let's see here I'm going to get into the menu, and we're going to find Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. So we're going to select Wi-Fi, we're going to turn it on, and then what you want to do is starting to look. So I've already downloaded an app. It's in here. This is the app that you can get right here. Z Sandy Cam. So you click on that. And I'll just set this down. And it's going to start, it'll start looking for the camera itself. All right, so we're going to get this thing set up. What we do first is you want to download the app, which is this guy right here Z Sandy Cam. Okay. Next thing you want to do is you want to go into Wi-Fi on your phone and then you want to look for the Wi-Fi camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Wi-Fi on the camera itself. Now we're going to turn Wi-Fi on and now it's on. We're going to look for that is the what we're looking for which is right here. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. That one. And then the password is one two three four five six seven eight. I believe. Yep. Okay. Connected. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna leave this here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the app. And here we go. And you can tell just right away, just looking at the app, the delay is hardly anything. So there's me. Haha. -ha. Yep, that's me. So there's hardly any delay on this thing at all. So.
All right, so say I want to keep it right there. What I can do is I can go into the settings and I can go movie date and print. I can do movie record size. Everything is super easy to adjust inside the app. It's actually way easier. Uh, cycling record, capture size, 20 megapixel. You could do all that. You could format the SD card from here. Um, you could also shoot and decide like, oh, you know, I want to take a picture instead. So boom, you want to take a picture. There's a little shutter sound from the camera. Picture's taken. You could access your files from here. There's that. You can switch that over. You can access to your photos. That's fine. And then you can go back into here and all your settings. So say you want to start recording. So you would hit the record button or the video button and then you can record start recording right from here now you can see the delay is my GoPro has a delay of about I don't know two seconds this doesn't really have there's my lighting sorry this doesn't really have a very long delay at all so hit stop record and then you want it to go into the files which is in here in the video files it should pop up as soon as it finishes generating but you could also delete from here there's the photo I just shot and you can go back in fast download original file or cancel so you can do all these things was out of it that part's done all right, so just as a reference point, I just have it on photo right now. And if you hit the up, down arrows, you can actually zoom. You can also do this while recording video, um, which is really cool. I mean, you, you, there's certain other action cameras you cannot zoom on, which is nice. I mean, granted it's a six time zoom. It's probably pretty shaky when you zoom in pretty far. You know, I mean, if I zoom in, if I zoom in somewhat far, let me try to get a little closer, maybe I can try to zoom in on that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't go in any further, but I mean, it has zoom. Granted, it gets a little shaky when you know it gets zoomed in, but it has zoom, and that's a cool thing. And you can hear it when the video starts to record. You can actually hear it. Video start. The voice prompts. As I said, you can turn that off. Go back into there. You want to hit record again. You can see it's a video start. It gives you a little timer on the top of how much is being recorded. And just the, I mean, just the delay alone is really good. It has very, very little lag. What we're going to do is we're going to get it outside and we're going to do some action shots and show you how good this thing shoots. All right, so I'm just doing a little test run of the uh, action camera here and I'm driving around. Um, hopefully it looks good and it sounds okay. Uh, I am. I do have the waterproof case on it right now, but yeah, I think for the most part, this is a pretty cool little camera, especially for the price. It's got uh, it's got a ton of features, uh, even zoom that GoPro does not have. So I think it's cool that it has zoom. I think it's cool that it has voice command, uh, 4K. Obviously, it comes with a ton of mounts as well. So, you know, GoPro's great camera, and they've been uh, they've been on the top for a long time. And cameras like this are really catching up. They're really uh, tugging away at GoPro's uh, coattails. So they're they're right on the uh, on the brink of something awesome. So that being said, though, for about a hundred bucks for this camera, it's pretty sweet. It's a good deal. 
and I, uh, so far I, I like it. You know, I've only tested this thing for about a day so far, and uh, in my opinion, so far so good. I like it. All right, so all in all, this little action camera, this thing retails for $100, okay, $99.95. Put this thing up against a GoPro, which is $399.95, it's a quarter of the price. Now, if you want to get into action video camera shooting, uh, but you don't have the budget for a GoPro, this is a great way to do it. Um, it's very basic, it's made in China, so keep that in mind, but it shoots in 4K, it shoots in high def, and it shoots audio. The only downside to it, um, well, one of the downsides to it is that I haven't figured out a way to hook up an external mic to it yet, but I'm still working on that part of it. Aside from that, battery lasts about the same length as a GoPro, so time-lapse recording works really good. The um, audio and the video, they look pretty good for what it is, you know? I mean, as I said, it's a $100 camera compared to a $400 camera. Okay, guys, so that's my review of the 4K action camera. Uh, I really like it for what it is. I mean, it's a hundred bucks, as I said, and it's, uh, you know, for a hundred dollars, you get a lot of camera features uh, in a small, compact little little deal here. Now, this is very uh, similar to, say, a GoPro, um, but it's not a GoPro. So, um, for the price, it's a hundred bucks. You know, give it a try. If you don't like it, you always return it. But for a hundred dollars, you're getting a pretty quality uh, little action camera. So it's not any more heavier than a GoPro. It's only slightly larger than my Hero 3 Black, and I do mean slightly larger. It's not much at all. It shoots in several different options. It has zoom, it has voice control, it has uh, image, uh, it has uh, motion detection, it has a built-in gyroscope. It has a two-inch screen that's already built in. It's not a touch screen, but still it has a screen already built in, so you don't have to buy anything else. It also has an app that's compatible with most smartphones. You can actually just link it to the, uh, to the smartphone app, and then control the uh, camera through the app itself, which makes things super easy. All the mounts on this thing, and it comes with a lot of them, are compatible with GoPro style uh, mounts, tripods, you name it. And, you know, as I said, for a hundred bucks, you can't really go wrong, especially with a waterproof case. So if you like my review and found it informative, you wanna buy one of these for yourself, click on that link down in my description box below and make your purchase. When you do, it helps support my YouTube channel. Another way to help support is to click on that i button right up here. When you do that, you could donate any number of dollars and that's going to allow me to produce higher quality content to give back to you. So if you have any questions or comments about this little camera, if you like it, you don't like it, you think it's overpriced, you think it's underpriced, um, or you just think it's awesome and you want to share your comments or your experiences with the camera if you already have one, leave them all down in my comments section and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Also too, please like, share, and subscribe. Here's the like button right down here. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe. There's a subscribe button right here. You click on that, this way you stay up to date on every time I post a new video. Another way to stay connected is to go to my website, which is trailamountain.com. You go there and it's gonna have a little pop-up where you can put your email address and click submit. When you subscribe on my website, you're gonna get an update every time I post something new on the website as well. So you can stay up to date on everything that I'm working on here at Trailer Mountain. So thanks again for tuning in to my latest video. I really appreciate it. Please keep checking back for more gear reviews, outdoor-related hodgepodge, gear talk, and giveaways. Take care, guys. Get outdoors.